Ah, uh, just a busy Sunday afternoon taking care of a five-year-old, a two-year-old, and a 456-month-old. Not to mention over a hundred houseplants. I hardly ever have a moment to myself. It's been two years since I bought this IKEA Bagebo cabinet and converted it into a greenhouse that's fully functioning. And I think it's time for a refresh. I wanted to keep some of my more higher humidity loving plants inside of here. And this bottom shelf is actually all just corn propagations, which need higher humidity. There's a heat map down here, so it's nice and warm. This houses some unique plants that would do as well in just ambient humidity in my house. And it's also great for keeping away children and pets. Well, children until they get older and they figure out how to open the door. But I have some exciting upgrades for this and I'll explain the whole process of how I built this as well. I temporarily turned off my grow lights because the exposure was just too crazy. As soon as I open this, I can feel the humidity. This is right now sitting at 61%. I have some Hoyas, some Alocasias, and down here are all of my corn propagations. Look how cute that is. This is the baby to the sad looking mom. I kind of went crazy with plucking all her corms and she wasn't happy about it. Ooh, this one popped a leaf too. So I did all of these in December. They all grow at different rates. Here's another sibling. String of hearts that I'm rooting. This one is from the same batch, but clearly not doing anything. It's the runt of the litter. Ooh. I don't remember <laughs> what this one is, but it's a variegated alocasia and it's really pretty. Is this a poly? Is this a dragon scale? Maybe it's a poly. Look at all that algae. Oh well. Not doing too well, but it'll be fine. The roots are still good. Variegated pink dragon. This was from December too, but no action. Oh, this is the variegated dragon scale. Also no action. Oh wait! Just kidding, there's roots. It just hasn't popped a leaf yet. Oh my gosh, it's so dirty down here. I'm pulling all of these out of their high humidity environment, so I'm gonna work pretty quickly just because these are not used to just being out in the general population environment. Now these aren't the original shelves that came with the Begebo. These are custom acrylic shelves that were made just specifically for this cabinet and I'm actually going to be upgrading these. This is so long overdue. It's so disgusting down here. So for all the cords, I have light and fan cords feeding through the bottom here. You do need to drill a hole before you assemble and you need a hole saw because it's gonna drill through the actual metal. And I used a desk grommet to cover that hole. And because you're exposing the raw metal once you drill a hole, I do recommend that you use something like a Rust-Oleum clear enamel to spray paint that area just so that exposed metal parts don't rust. I recommend you do this before you assemble the whole thing. So just figure out which piece is the bottom um, and drill a hole in the back corner. I had my neighbor do it. And for those eagle eyes that noticed that toilet just randomly sitting in the living room, we're potty training right now. So the Big Apple is only $40. It's extremely affordable. It's actually the cheapest of all the IKEA glass cabinets you can buy. I made a short last year comparing all the different models and their prices and their dimensions. 
so I'll link that up here. One of the reasons why this is probably so cheap is because the sides are made out of mesh, so they're not sealed. I've seen people do various things to seal the sides. They would cut acrylic pieces and like somehow stick it on. The easiest and cheapest solution I found is to just use a window sealing kit. It just shrink wraps this plastic directly onto here. Super easy to use. It comes with this roll of tape and I just put tape along the perimeter, not on the mesh. I did it outside the mesh and I stuck the tape on. And then you stick this plastic sheet onto that tape and then just blow dry it. And when you blow dry it, it shrink wraps it so then it's like nice and tight like a drum. It's been like this for two years. It never once leaked. And then I use this type of foam weather stripping. It's really cheap. And I weather stripped on this side and then the opposite side. It's just literally sticker. And then to seal the gap underneath the door, you need to first see where the door stops. And then I put the strip right behind it. That way when the door closes, it's sealed. So the door closes and it's sealed right there. There's no air escaping underneath this gap. And then I did one here for this little piece up top and then all the way down the side. This will seal the gap when the door is closed on that side. And again, you need to leave space for the door to be able to close. So I'm doing it right after the part where the door closes. So I put some weather stripping right here. This bottom portion fell off, so I'm gonna redo that. All right, so everything is sealed all the way around. There's nothing up here. This is where the door closes and that's the magnet, so no seal there. Note to self, find a screwdriver that fits. I was lazy and just got whatever was on hand, but this is not the right size. It's like way too big, plus this is a flathead, not a Phillips. And the upgrade I'm doing is I'm going to be installing new shelves. Look, they're Monstera leaf cutouts. And a pegboard set. Look how cute this is. I'm obsessed. And the genius thing about this custom acrylic shelf is that it has these little holes so you can screw in the grow lights directly onto the shelf. So you don't need to MacGyver a way to attach the grow light. So these screws come with the acrylic shelf and they fit into these holes perfectly. These clamps come with the grow light. So you just take the screw, stick it through that clamp. Here's the light. Snap it on. I'm gonna move it over to the middle. And then I'm gonna fit it on here. And just tighten it in. And now the pegboards. And just when I thought I was done, I found these micro pieces. Again, these magnets and hardware came with these custom pegboards. And this is how they'll attach to the back of the cabinet. Note to self, don't ever do this on a furry white rug because it's completely <laughs> dirty now. <laughs> Thank you.
This can all be done in one afternoon with building and putting in all the add-ons and the accessories. It's such a simple, fast little greenhouse cabinet that you can make. And, oh, I forgot to put in the hydrometer. That helps me keep track of the humidity. Everything is going off of the smart timer, so the lights will be on for 12 hours a day and automatically shut off. Fans, I have them running 24 hours a day. They're computer fans, so they're built to be able to run for a long period of time. I love how everything has levels all the way across with the pegboards, and you can see the difference in the lights. This one up top is more yellow, the black ones are more bright white. I'm gonna see what difference that makes with the growth as well. This one took me eight months, partially because I decided to spray paint this white. This is the Rutsta and it only comes in black. Don't spray paint, it was the worst decision of my life. And the other part of the reason why this took so long was because we had a major house leak and we had to move and relocate our entire family over the summer. So kind of not my fault. This is a much bigger project, but it fits a lot more plants. All in all, greenhouses are so much fun. It allows you to completely expand the type of plants that you have in your collection. Let me know which one you prefer, and I'll catch you on the flip side. Translation, I'll be looking at my plants all day until my kids ask for snacks.